What's up guys? Decided to do uh, part two of my uh, 2500k overclocking guide here. So now we're going to try and go to, let's try 4.5 gigahertz. Now I don't believe it'll do that on stock volts, so we'll put it up to 1.285 volts. And I'm gonna leave everything else the way I had it. And uh, then we're gonna save. Say yes, and then it'll reboot, and uh, now I'll turn the cam back on once we're in Windows. Okay, so we're in Windows now. We've got it at... It's at 1.6 gigahertz right now, because I still got that uh, C1E turned on. I guess if you have an Asus or an ASRock board, you're supposed to leave that on for some reason. But, I don't know if it should. That's just something I read in some forums, so... Anyway... Here we got our uh, idle temps, which will be a lot lower since it's sitting at 1.6 gigahertz right now. But I do have it over at 4.5 gigahertz. But if it boots into Windows just fine, you're going to want to run some. You're going to want to run something like Prime 95 for a while, for at least three hours or so, to see if it'll. You know, have an error or it'll blue screen or something. Sometimes it won't blue screen. It'll just have one of the workers turn off with an error. And then you know you're close to the limit, probably, of what you can do on the voltage you're at. And then just put the voltage up a little more and run it again. And then that worker might not have any errors at all. And then after you run Prime 95 just try to uh, play a game or something for a while and if it has blue screens or if it crashes or something then don't uh, then you don't have enough uh, voltage probably so you should go add a little more but don't go over 1.5 volts for 24-7 uh, use because that will eat away anything over that will eat away at your processor real quick at least that's what I hear. Some people say you shouldn't go over 1.3. Some say you shouldn't go over 1.5. I'm just going to go with the 1.5. But I do have really good cooling. So if you don't have good cooling, you should probably lay off on the volts. But anyway, let's try and overclock this a little further up to like 4.8 gigahertz now. So I will restart. Well, we'll stop this test. And then we'll restart, and I will turn the camera back on as soon as it's back in the BIOS. Okay, we are back in the BIOS now. And I just wanted to uh, say real quick, because I don't think I mentioned it yet. All processors and video cards, anything that you can overclock, everything is different. Some things you will be able to overclock higher than me if you have the same stuff. And other people might get unlucky and not be able to overclock as high as me. Honestly, I don't know how good my chip is yet. It's been at 5 gigahertz since I've had it until I did this little guide. So, yeah. Just keep that in mind. Just because I can do it doesn't mean yours can do it. But at the same time, you might have something that can be go that's way better than mine. Anyway, so first thing we're going to do is set the ratio to 48x. And then for the fixed voltage, I'm going to try it at 350 to see if that'll boot into Windows, and then we'll go a little bit. And if this doesn't work, then we'll just go from that up to that, and we'll just go by five. We'll go up one at a time. So, again, we're going to save changes, hit yes, then it should hopefully boot and post. And boot into Windows. So I will turn the camera back on as soon as we get back into Windows. So it booted into Windows, no problem. And it seems to have set my voltage a little bit higher to 
one that three six volts from three by five. But I do have a load line calibration on level two, so it's going to do that. And here's our idle temperatures again. These obviously, since I've only had it on for a little while, these aren't going to be perfectly accurate idle. But anyway, we got it at four point eight gigahertz. And now I'm going to play Alan Wake, which I've been playing up until I wanted to show you guys, or until I wanted to do my second part here. But this is a very interesting game, at least I think so. So I'm going to play that while running Prime 95, and I'll watch out for... Uh, what do I do with my Prime 95? There's my Prime 95, and I'm going to watch temps, obviously. Although, on the other hand, I really don't need to watch them too much, seeing as though I already know what they are when it's at 5 gigahertz, and it's nowhere near the limit at that. But, you should watch the temps. I'm just going to watch out for blue screens and whatnot, and uh, failed and cores failing and whatnot. So, we're going to do that. I'll put those two things up. We'll put them over here. And I'll play my game and see how this goes. And I'll probably turn the camera back on after about three hours or so. And if it fails or anything, I'll do updated core voltages and other tweaks that I do. Okay, so we had a blue screen like immediately. Like ten seconds after I shut the camera off. So since it did that almost immediately, I raised the voltage up quite a bit higher to... Uh, I think it was 1.3... 6.5 volts. So it's going to bounce around like that. So now I'm going to try and run this again while watching the temps and everything and hopefully this will be better. So I'll turn the camera back on as soon as uh, about three hours have passed or it has a blue screen or something again. Alright, well I uh, went and helped my friend uh, move some of his stuff into his new apartment and left this running and it's still going. Here's the temps right now. And that's the max temperatures. And that's core zero, one, two, three, and then the package. And the max volts that ever put in was 1.43 volts. Stop that Taz, you're not helping. Stop it. Alright, anyway. Sorry, cat's trying to jump up on me while I'm trying to make a video here. So let's stop Prime 95 now. Alright, so I ran that for 10 hours. So I'd call that pretty stable. And then just keep doing that over and over again until you get to uh, your comfortable voltage limit and uh, hopefully it's close to what you wanted to get your uh, processor up to. Because it gets to be a point where you just have to put way too many volts in for like no improvement. And I think I'm actually going to leave mine at 4.8 gigahertz now just because it takes a lot less uh, V-Core. I almost need close to 5, 1.5 volts. I think it's 1.488 volts, and that's what it takes to get to 5 gigahertz. Cat's trying to jump on me again, sweet. He needs to stop doing that, that's getting really annoying. Anyway. So, yeah, that's about it for this video. And uh, if anybody has any other questions, feel free to ask, and I'll answer them to the best of my knowledge. So, till next video, peace out guys.